Well, this Valentine's Day, you are loved. You are loved more than you recognize. For God so loved the world, so loved you, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever, anyone, whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. We are loved by God. That's amazing. That's staggering. But you know what's even more amazing? That God desires to be loved by us. That the maker of heaven and earth, the glorious God who is sovereign over all, wants to have a relationship with you. Not just coming to faith in him, but walking with him day by day and moment by moment. So that when a religious leader asks Jesus, what's the most important thing in all that had come before Jesus? It was easy. He went back to Deuteronomy chapter 6. The Shema, the great Shema of Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. That's the call of God. That's the desire of God's heart. To be loved by you and for you to receive his love. To walk in a living, dynamic relationship. And if you're a follower of Jesus, I hope you know that's true. And if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, I hope you hear these words and understand that that as we talk about these nine sacred pathways, these nine different ways of encountering God, that they're there because God wants you to be in relationship with him. He wants a dynamic relationship with you. And we've emphasized all through this series that we understand that, that, that there is one way to come to God in faith, and that's through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. God so loved the world, He sent His one and only Son. Salvation comes in the name of Jesus. There's one way to know God, the Father, through faith in Jesus. But there's many ways to grow in our faith. One way to know, many ways to grow. And these pathways are about growing to love God more discovering how God has made us and walking that journey of joy of knowing and loving him more. So the pathways really help us experience the joy of the journey of growing in love with God. And I want you to picture something in your mind. I want you to picture a, a, just a massive field that just goes kind of on and on and on. And that field is filled with flowers. And all, but all the flowers are exactly identical. They're all tulips. And they're all the same color. They're pink. I mean, an entire field, as far as you can see, all pink tulips. You say, well, no such place exists. Actually, they do in the Netherlands. They grow flowers, and they have entire fields that are one color. They have massive markets where they sell these flowers. And so you go, man, that would be beautiful to see, just a massive field. But but you know what's even more beautiful? Imagine a garden filled with all kinds of different flowers of different colors. It's a different kind of beauty. There's this kind of... this kind of engaging, diverse, beautiful, different colors and flowers. And if you could picture a garden with kind of a walkway and walking through it, instead of all being the same color of flowers, they're different. Well, that's this picture of sacred pathways. The field with all the same color flowers is kind of the thinking that says, okay, okay, we should all know Jesus and come to him and receive him, and then we should all grow in faith and love God, and we all do it the same way. Everyone grows in their faith identically. And, and, Usually if there's a church that's like that, that everyone's supposed to grow in their faith identically, it's because that's how the pastor is wired. That's how the pastor's style is. So the pastor kind of believes, well, I walk with God, I'm close to God, so I'll help you walk with God too, and I'll do it the way I'm made, the way I connect with God. But that's so limiting because God's made us different, beautifully different, just like flowers. And so today we're going to talk about understanding the pathways, and I'm going to give you three words. There's these nine pathways we talked about the last three weeks. If you're here for the first time or online for the first time, go back and watch the last three weeks of messages, and it'll get you caught up. But each week we looked at three different pathways, one way to know God through faith in Jesus, different ways to grow in faith. As we looked at those pathways, we've discovered that there's different ways to connect with God, but, but here's the three words that we're going to think about as we begin our time together today. The words are all... Some and one. All, some, and one. And I'm talking about the pathways, ways to connect with God. So here's the first one. All. Understand and appreciate all the pathways. We need to understand and appreciate and bless that there's different ways that people connect with God. And and be careful that we don't kind of condemn or put down other ways that are different than us. Oh. Did you see her, how she worships? She's almost dancing in church. I mean, her hands are lifted. She's putting on a big show. Look at me, look at me. Oh, she's just so expressive. Isn't she spiritual? 
So tired of that. Wait a minute. I, I'm going to spend my worship time judging somebody else in the way that they worship? No. We need to bless all the pathways. One of the pathways is the enthusiast. And the enthusiast is passionate. They want to express themselves. If you see someone like that that's really expressing, they're probably holding back. Because <laughs> they're with everyone else. But, they, but that's how some people express themselves. We want to bless all the pathways. Oh, that guy? I don't even know if he loves Jesus. I never see him smile. You know, he comes to church and he barely moves his lips when he sings. There's no passion, no energy. Does he even know Jesus? What's wrong with him? Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul addresses this topic of us respecting and honoring each other in the different ways he's made us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and in Romans chapter 12. Look with me at Romans chapter 12. If you have your Bibles, if you have your Bible app, go to Romans chapter 12. And I want you to hear it because God is painting this picture of the church, the body of Christ. And pointing out that we have different giftings and different styles of learning and different ways we express ourselves and different temperaments. But that's not, not only okay, that's wonderful. God delights in it. So look at me at Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 3. And the Apostle Paul writes, inspired by the Holy Spirit, he writes these words. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, every one of you, Paul says, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Hear the warning? Don't be arrogant. Don't think of it. No. Oh, my way to connect with God is the best way. No, 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 no. My way is the only way. The only truly spiritual way. He said, be careful. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. Stop. Reflect. In accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body... With, one, with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. Put your finger right there in your Bible or just pause right there in your, on your phone, the app on your phone, on verse 5 there. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and all the members don't all have the same function. What's Paul saying? He's saying we all have a physical body. He says, you know how this works. You have a physical body. You got fingers. You got toes. You got ears. You got a nose. You got parts of your body. But they form one body. You don't disconnect, oh, that, that, that finger doesn't really matter. I mean, all of you matters, you're connected. So you have one body with many parts. See, that's the way the church is. Each person different, but each person with something to contribute. In 1 Corinthians 12, the Apostle, goes, Apostle Paul goes on to talk about how you, can ne you can't say, oh, that part of the body isn't important. And you can never say, I don't matter. What he's saying is every person in the church matters, even though we're different. One way to know God through faith in Jesus, many ways to grow in faith. And so when it comes to the spiritual pathways, everybody catch this. We are going to bless all of them, even if we don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't get how that connects somebody to Jesus. But it does. I'm going to bless that. I'm okay with that. I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to look down on somebody else. I'm going to think with sober judgment. I'm going to be thankful for the way God's made me, but I'm not going to expect everybody else to meet with Jesus like me. Because here's the dilemma. If I say to somebody else, you have to meet Jesus and worship him and grow in faith just like I do. Here's the pathway, follow my pathway. And that's not how God's made you. I'm now robbing you of a chance to connect with God. And I'm robbing God of receiving the glory of having an intimate friendship with you. I've got to look at all the different pathways and say, I celebrate them, I bless them, even though I don't totally understand it. Even if I'm like, you know what, that wouldn't work for me at all. When I, when I did the Sacred Pathways uh, self-assessment that we have on our website, and I hope many, many more of you will do that after the service today, but when I did the self-assessment, there were a couple areas where I just bottomed out, where I had like almost no score, because that, that pathway just doesn't work for me. And I've even I've tried like, to engage with something, and I'm like, you know, that just isn't me. It doesn't connect me. But that's okay, because I have pathways that do connect me to Jesus. The bottom line is we all want to fall more in love with Jesus and walk closely with him. Amen? and experience his love for us. And so I don't have to have all the pathways, but I do need to bless them all, and so do you. And, and we have to recognize that God's made us so different. Um, you know, the, the, the intellectual approach is somebody who wants to learn something new. I, like, I, I love, and that's my primary approach to God, my primary pathway is the intellectual approach. When I learn something new and it touches my mind, it moves right to my heart and causes me to worship. But, that, that, that's, but the traditionalist says, you know what draws me near to God? Something old and familiar. An old song, a familiar experience. And that catapults me into the presence of God. 
Who's right then? The intellectual who wants to learn something new or the traditionalist who likes to, to, to enjoy the things that have been around and that propel them closer? Which is right? The answer is both. And we need to bless people right where they're at. One way to salvation, one way to know God, but many ways to grow. So all, when it comes to the pathways, we will bless all, we will encourage all. And as a church, we're going to try to create ways that you can connect with God in the way he's made you. Here's the next word, some. Some of the pathways. Explore and experiment with new pathways. You can explore and experiment trying to find new ways to connect with God because if the, the goal is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, if that's the goal, then you need to find new, fresh ways to do that. Ways you can meet with God, ways you can encounter God. And so if you do the spiritual gifts assessment and you say, okay, there's some areas that I scored almost like not at all, that just doesn't work for me. Here's what you're going to find. There's going to be two or three pathways that kind of, kind of fit for you. You'll probably have one primary one, but a couple that really do kind of connect for you. Explore those. Try something new. Because the goal is to love God more and to walk more closely with him. So try, you know, engaging in new ways. If, if you're a sensate, if you say, boy, I, you know, I, I really see that I, my, when I, my eyes are engaged, when my ears are engaged, when my taste is engaged, it draws me near to God, then try to find ways in your worship and your celebration of God to tie those things in. Pictures that remind you of God's glory and sounds that lift your spirits and music that causes your heart to soar and encounter, use those things to help you grow closer to God. Maybe you do the survey and you find that you're an enthusiast. An enthusiast is somebody who just is expressive and you go, Ben, I, I, that's kind of how I feel inside, but I've never let it out. I mean, I just kind of keep it all locked down. So I want to start, I want to, start to express myself more. Here's a, here's a little challenge for you. Try this. Next time you're worshiping, Try to lift your hands. So I've never done that. I'm in public. Say, so, well, then do it when you're at home alone. Put some great worship music on. You can go on the website and pull up songs from Shoreline, and we've got concerts we've done, different things. Put on some great worship music. And then you just, you're going to lift your hands. So go like this. Just try, start here. Like, kind of like, just kind of a little, little, kind of down here. You know, just start right. Say, so this, this is my zone right here. This is where I'm, right? Everybody getting that? I'm down, I'm down here. I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm going to receive. I'm going to lift. And then you're like, okay, that, that's good. I'm going to kind of, I'm going to go shoulder height. I'm going to, okay, right, right, I'm right here, okay. I'm right in this zone. Okay, that works. You might find yourself, oh, wait, can I, can I just, no, bring it back here. Bring it back. Thank you. No, don't, oh, don't overdo it. You know, but you go, okay, but just, you start to say, and you might find yourself gathered with God's people and feeling in your heart that you want to lift your hands. And I'm not, no, nobody has to do that. But if you, if you, in your heart, you're like, man, I'd love to lift my hands to the Lord, but I'm worried about what somebody else is going to think. Don't worry about that. Worry about what God's going to think. Right? And so just take a next step. Move into it. Some, develop some of those pathways that fit who you are. And, and so, so you say, well, that way I can understand those pathways more. I can experience them more fully. I can expand my horizons and try new ways of worshiping and glorifying God. That's the goal, to bring glory to God and to grow in love with Him. So if God says, if you kind of look and you go, boy, there's two or three ways that kind of help me connect with God, try new ways. And I'll get into more details about how to do that a little bit later in the message, but just commit to go a little bit deeper. And, and, and try, you know, experimenting. I was thinking about this. I was thinking about, I've had people tell me that when it comes to opera, there's two kinds of people in the world. It tends to be people who love it and people who really don't love it. It either kind of hits their soul or doesn't hit their soul, you know? So if somebody says to you, hey, listen, there's this amazing opera going on in the Bay Area. I got an extra ticket. Do you want to come? Some of you that, who love opera, oh, man, I, I'd love that. But if you say you've never been and seen an opera, okay, you experiment. You go, yeah, I'll come check it out. I've never done that. It's kind of, uh, you know, and when it's over, your response might be this. I never knew. I didn't even know what all the words were, but it just moved me and drew me in. And just, I, I, I wept and it just, it's just like, it just captured my heart. Wonderful. Then go to another opera if you get a chance. But if you say, that was the biggest waste of five hours of my life. I'm never doing that. That's okay too, right? You, you, you explored. You checked it out. When it, when it comes to walking pathways to glorify God, try some different pathways that kind of fit you and see if that draws you into the presence of the living God. So, so all of the pathways, we're going to bless, we're not going to criticize, we're going to celebrate people growing closer to God through their pathway. Some of the pathways we're going to explore, we're going to experiment, we're going to try to, in our own lives, develop those so we can love God more and walk more closely with Him. But then here's one. Find the one pathway that just really works for you. And we all kind of have it. There's, find the pathway that's like, man, when I get on that pathway, it just catapults me in the presence of Jesus. For me, 
It's the intellectual pathway. If I want to get close to God, I, I sit down somewhere quiet, I open this book, and, and it speaks to me. And when there's a new truth, a fresh insight, a new perspective on a familiar passage, and that hits my mind, it catapults me to worship. Some people are like, that? Isn't it like singing songs and jumping around and stuff? No, that's, that's maybe for someone else, but that's, for me, that's, that's my... I know the one way that when I want to get close with God, I know how I can get there. You discover what's, the prim, you know, what's a primary way that you can just... Maybe you know, you're a traditionalist, and maybe you're or a sensate, or maybe you're an enthusiast. So you go, I'm going to walk that path, and when you do, it gets you close to God. Make sure you always have that there so that you can day by day grow closer and closer to Him. If you're an intellectual type, get a commentary. Make sure it's a good biblical you know, commentary, not a crazy one, that's, but there's, there's, you know, get a good commentary. If you're a naturalist, find a, a place outdoors that really connects you with Jesus, where you like to walk or sit or be quiet. If you're a sensate, add some, some visuals and smells and, and sounds to your worship. If you're a caregiver, find a way to meet a new need that you've been thinking about. If you're an activist, pick a new thing to do that you can go in partnership with God and make a difference in the world. So, you look at the nine pathways. All of them, the word all, we're going to bless them all, we're going to celebrate them all. As a church, we're going to embrace all of those. Some of them are going to fit you, so develop those and grow those within you. And one of them is going to be kind of like your go-to pathway that you know if you need to get close to Jesus, bam, you jump right in that pathway and you're there, all right? And so I want to do something a little different here. I want to pause before I get into some practical ways that we can kind of move forward in growing in the pathways. And I want to give a word of blessing. I want to go through all nine of the pathways. And I want to give you kind of a simple definition. And maybe you've already done the survey and you kind of know what your primary pathway or pathways are. Maybe you've been listening to sermons and you kind of just by listening go, I can, it's this or this. Or maybe right now when I give the definition, you'll go, oh, that's me. If, if the pathway is you, I'm going to give you a word of blessing that you would understand that God delights in the way he's made you and he wants to meet you through that pathway. So brace yourself and open yourself to receive a blessing. If you want to do a little hands open to receive the blessing when it comes to you, feel free. No pressure. Okay? So the, the pathways of wonder. There's three pathways of wonder. Here's the first one, the naturalist. So just listen to this definition and then receive a blessing if you're a naturalist. The naturalist says, let me meet God outdoors and in the creation meet my creator. Some of you just connect with God in creation. If that's you, receive this blessing. May you make space and time to walk and run and sit quietly in the beauty of God's creation. And as you do, may the Creator whisper to you that of all my creation, I delight in people the most. I take delight in you. And as you're in creation, may you see your Maker and experience His presence and love and worship Him more fully. And may you love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. We bless how God has made you if you meet Him that way. The sensate. The sensate says, let me experience God with my senses. God, bring my senses alive and let me encounter you there. Here's a blessing for you. If you're a sensate, may God bless you. May he open your eyes to see his beauty. May he open your ears to hear things that cause you to wonder in who he is. May your taste buds experience the glory and beauty of fresh fruit. May your senses be brought alive by the God who made every one of them. And as they are, may you worship him and glorify him and love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and senses for the glory of Jesus. Amen. Know that we bless how God has made you. The traditionalist. The traditionalist says, let me remember God in the rhythms and rituals of the past that touch my heart in the present and compel me to worship God. If you say, boy, that's me, I'm a traditionalist, receive this blessing. May God engage you in rhythms and patterns of the past that help you remember his beauty, to remember how he touched you and moved in previous days and months and years and decades. And may those rituals and rhythms of the past bring alive your heart today and remind you that you are loved and you are precious and the God of yesterday is the God of today and forever. Receive his blessing 
In Jesus' name, amen. Those are the pathways of wonder. Some of you walk the pathways of contemplation. And if you walk many of these, just receive every blessing that comes your way, all right? Feel free to drink them in. The pathway of contemplation. The first one is the intellectual. The intellectual says, let me think about the great truths and realities of God. And that will draw me near the God I love. If you're an intellectual, in terms of how you connect with God, receive this blessing. May the God who made your mind bring it alive. May you immerse yourself in his scriptures and may that truth touch your hearts. May you read great theology and think deeply of who God is. And as you reflect on the greatness of God and of his glory, of his truth, of his holiness, of his beauty, as your mind is captured by his truth, let it capture your heart and catapult you into the presence of the God who made you and loves you and delights when you love him with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. Amen. Some of you are ascetics. You say, let me find quiet places of silence, solitude, and places to reflect deeply on God. If that's you, receive this blessing. May God, who is your good shepherd, lead you to green pastures alongside of quiet waters. May you make space for silence and quiet and reflection. And in those quiet places, may the voice of God speak to your heart and remind you that you are his beloved, his child. And in those quiet places, may you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Amen. The contemplative says, let me feel the love of God, the presence of God, intimacy with God, the goodness of my Lord. The contemplative, their heart engages with God as a one deeply loved. If you're a contemplative, receive this blessing. May your heart come alive as you recognize the God who says, you are my precious child my daughter, my son. You're beloved in my sight. May you make space to listen to the scriptures as they tell you you are precious and made in the image of the very God who you worship. May in your contemplation, you experience the depth of God's love as he says you are precious to him. And may you then worship him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. And then there's the pathways of action. The caregiver, the activist, and the enthusiast who are saying, finally, it's my time. Bless me too. Right? And so let's think of each of those. The caregiver says, let me see Jesus in the faces of the broken and forgotten and encounter my Savior in the action of service in his name. Caregivers receive this word of blessing. May the heart of Jesus continue to capture your heart. And may you love with tenderness and care with sensitivity. And as you go into this world and care, may you recognize that each face you look into is a person who Jesus said, as you do it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you have done it for me. As you care in the name of Jesus, care side by side with Jesus. Feel his presence. And love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, all that you are. Amen. The activist says, let me stand with Jesus against injustice, against brokenness, against the sin in the world. And may the presence of Jesus and my presence make a difference. If you're an activist, in terms of how you approach God and walk with Jesus, receive this word of blessing. May you move in the power of the Holy Spirit. May you hear the voice of God cry out on behalf of the broken and the forgotten and the outcast, and may he move your heart and your hands and your feet to make a difference for the sake of Jesus. May your heart be broken by the things that break the heart of God. And in the power of Jesus, may you do something about it. 
in partnership with your Savior. So as you take action in this world, you encounter Jesus and you love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the enthusiast, the enthusiast says, let me sing, let me praise, let me celebrate, let me dance like David, let me meet God in the passion of worship and the mystery of his presence. If that's that's you, receive this blessing. May you sing with fresh passion. May you paint or sculpt or dance or use whatever form of art God has given you for the glory of God. May you engage your whole self in bringing God God worship and praise and may others look on and be inspired to worship God with greater passion because they see the enthusiasm that comes through your heart and life and soul. And as you do, may you worship the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. Receive the blessing of God and remember, he made you the way you are. There's one way to know God, faith in Jesus. There's many ways to grow in that faith. And God's given you a pathway that fits you. Walk that pathway, pursue it with passion. And so one more kind of idea that I want to lean into for a couple of minutes before we close. And that is to tend the garden of your soul. Tend the garden of your soul. Your spiritual growth, your spiritual maturity, your journey of faith, you growing more in love with Jesus, it is not determined by your parents. It won't be pressured by your spouse. It won't become because your pastor leans on you occasionally. None of those things will cause you to grow deep in faith. It will be you choosing to tend the garden of your soul and take your spiritual journey seriously. There's a point where we each grow up in faith and say, it's time for me to take this seriously. And so if you think about your spiritual growth like a garden, you know, planting a garden and tending a garden, anyone can plant a garden. Anyone can. Not everyone can tend to take care of a garden. Some of you have tried. (laughs) So picture a garden that somebody's planted and they've planted vines and trees and plants and flowers and two years have gone by. And they haven't tended it. They haven't watered it. They haven't weeded it. They haven't got, you know, done anything to get the pests and bugs out of there. They haven't kept the bunnies and the rodents and the gophers away. They just left it alone. You come back two years later, what's it look like? It's dead. It's desolate. There's nothing there. Because gardens can't just be planted. They have to be tended. You come to faith in Jesus. He plants a seed in you. You know him. But then you tend that spiritual journey. You tend the garden of your soul. Picture another garden where every single day the person who planted that garden is in that garden for a while. And they're picking weeds. And they're chasing away pests. And they're putting little baskets around things because these ones come and eat it and the birds come down and get it. And when it's dry and there's no rain, they water. And when it's really rainy, they, 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 they tend it. They take care of it. You walk into that garden, what does it look like? It's beautiful. The colors, the sights, it's, it's gorgeous. Why? Because someone's taking time to tend it. So here's my challenge to you. Tending with tenacity. Tend the garden of your soul with seriousness, with tenacity, with commitment. As as much commitment as you would to anything that you really value. And there's nothing you should value more than your love for Jesus and your relationship with him. So how do you tend the garden of your soul? Let me give you some ideas. And this is kind of a lightning round. You can write, write these down. I'll give you some references to look deeper into this topic. But how do you tend the garden of your soul? Number one, if you're a note taker, you can write these down. Invest time every day. Just like with a garden, if you want it to be beautiful, every day you spend a little time on it. Invest some time every day in the garden of your soul. Nurturing your sacred pathway, spending time with Jesus, being in his presence every day, every day, year after year, year after year. Do you know that almost everything that I preach that has power doesn't come out of me preparing that week for a sermon. It comes from over 40 years of every day sitting at the feet of Jesus. I can't live, I can't be who I'm supposed to be if I don't spend time with Jesus. This morning I knew I was preaching two services. I knew I had to be here at 7.30 for our huddle. I knew I was going to run through my sermon this morning. But before I ran through my sermon, before I came here, I spent time just doing what I, I have to do every single day. Just opening the word of God, being in prayer, talking with Jesus. Not for you, not for the church. Because I need to be with Jesus or I have nothing to say to you. And I have very little to give to my wife and my kids. But when I sit at the feet of Jesus, he fills me up. I have something to offer bigger than me. 
Tend the garden of your soul every day. And I encourage you to start today. Find a time, find a place, find a rhythm that works for you. And can I tell you, if you fall down, if you're like, I did that for a while, but I haven't done that for a week or a month or three years. If you fall down, God is a loving parent. He's ready to pick you up and get you walking again. Picture a parent who's teaching a child to walk, and the child's trying their best, and this little toddler's starting to walk, and they fall over. The parent doesn't say, what's wrong with you? Can't you walk? The parent says, I know you're a child. I know you. What does the parent do? They run over, they pick the kiddo up, and they brush him off. Say, it's okay. Try again. Try again. Some of you say you just need to get back up on your feet and say, I'm going to walk with Jesus. I'm not just going to come to church on Sunday for an hour, but every day I'm going to sit at his feet. I'm going to find a pathway that works for me, and I'm going to grow in my love for Jesus. Every day. Number two. Write this down. Focus, focus, focus. Focus when you're spending time with Jesus. Ruthlessly remove distractions. When you're going to be with Jesus, get rid of other things that distract as best you can. As best you can. And so here's the thing for me. When I'm having my time with Jesus, I can't do it on my iPad. I can't do it on my computer. I can't do it on my phone. I don't have the strength and maturity to pull that off. I get distracted by the buzzes and the beeps. I better check this. I better say, I got to shut it all off, put it all away. And so I actually have a Bible that's my kind of personal study with Jesus Bible and a a little journal and a pen, and I turn everything else off. I would challenge you. If I tried to have my quiet time on an iPad, within five minutes, I'm I'm off somewhere else. I can guarantee you. So just ruthlessly remove the distractions and focus. In that time, whether you have five to seven minutes or a half an hour or an hour, in that time, push everything else aside and make Jesus central. Number three, keep trying stuff. Find what works for you. Keep it fresh. Try new things. Try another pathway. Try another. And, and, and again, in, in, in Gary Thomas's book, there's lots of great ideas there. If you do this, the, the self-assessment and you say you want to meet with someone, we'll walk you through some of those ways and give you some ideas. But uh, keep trying things, fresh new ways to meet with Jesus. Number four, learn from others. If you, notice, if, if, if you say, well, I have an intellectual approach, or I'm a naturalist, or I'm an enthusiast, and you're talking with somebody else and you find out that that's kind of how they connect with Jesus too, Here's what you, you ask him this great theological question. Tell me about what you do in your time with Jesus. What do you do? I said, well, I do this and this. You go, I never thought of that. I'm going to try that. I'm going to do that. And you learn from other people. Talk together about your journey with Jesus. And if you talk to somebody who's kind of wired like you are, learn from them, and then try. And you might try something they do, and that doesn't work for me. Or you might go, this is amazing. And you can dive more into your walk with him. And then, number five, learn from wisdom. Learn from wisdom. And I want to give you encouragement. This book that Gary Thomas wrote. We, we not, we don't, we're selling them cheap and we don't get any money off of them. And I, you know, but this book that Gary wrote on Sacred Pathways is a wonderful book. You can get that and just look at the chapters that are kind of your strongest pathways and get ideas and learn about people from history and great thinkers who've lived out that pathway and be inspired. But learn from people who know more about, about this topic of kind of walking with Jesus. And so that's a great reference, that book. And then number six, let, the pathway, let your pathways merge. I've been thinking about this. It's kind of something that hit me. That Sometimes in your life, you have a couple different pathways. And if you bring those pathways together, you can find new ways to walk with Jesus by different pathways that kind of merge together. So I was thinking about this. A person is a naturalist. They meet God outdoors, but they're also an intellectual. They meet God by learning new ideas. Why not take your Bible or a great book on Christian faith and read it outdoors? Go to the beach and read and combine together engaging your mind and creation. You're just merging those pathways. So when you know your pathways, find ways to... I was just thinking, well, how do you merge pathways together? I thought about this. What about a person who says, you know, my strongest pathway is an ascetic, where I kind of want to be alone and quiet, but also I have a pathway of a caregiver, and I really love to help people. How can I bring those together? Well, if you're trying to have a quiet, reflective place, don't come volunteer at the food pantry here. It's loud and crazy, and cars backed up all around, people are talking. But maybe you, you, when they reopen, you go to a retirement home, and you find a person who nobody comes and visits. And you say, can I visit that person once a week and just sit at their bedside and read the Bible to them and say a prayer for them? They say, well, we don't know if that person even is responsive and hears. Say, that's okay. I'm an ascetic. I don't mind being alone. I don't mind quiet places. But you sit at their side and you read the scriptures and you pray for them and you bring them the love of Jesus while you're in a quiet place. I just, you could bring those pathways together. This morning, as I was thinking about this, going through my sermon this morning, and I do a full kind of timed out final run through Sunday mornings before I come over to the campus here, and I got thinking about, what if you had a person who was a traditionalist and a contemplative? So they like tradition and things in the past that help them worship, but they also, the contemplative, they really like to experience God's love and God's presence and God's care in their life. So this is what came to my mind. I thought, I wonder if I... If I 
thought about what are the songs I sang when I was a brand new Christian. I became a Christian at 15 years old. It was the 70s. So at that time, there were lots and lots of different groups making Christian music. They were called Maranatha music. It was the only one, really, that was out there. There was traditional hymns, and then there were scripture songs, Maranatha music. So I went on YouTube this morning, and uh, this is after I preached through my sermon. I had a little bit of time before I came over here, and I typed in 1970s Maranatha praise song collection. Click. And up came an album. That's what we called it back in those days, a record album. I'm an old guy. But we, you know, and, and here it was. So I hit play. I was just going to listen to a couple songs. I listened to the entire thing. And it took me back to when I was 16, 17, 18 years old. I'm not a traditionalist. If you look at my thing, I'm not a strong and traditionalist. But remembering the past, those songs, I knew every word to every song on that album. Mostly because most of the songs only had like five words and it's a Bible verse. But it was very simple songs. As a matter of fact, um, somebody who heard the sermon this morning sent me a note already and said, I went and found that and listened to it and it took me back. It helped me to worship Jesus. He said, a simpler time. And one of those songs was the song that my wife walked down the aisle to when we got married. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul rejoice. And that song took me back to Garden Grove Community Church and took me back to the, the chapel at Western Seminary my, where my wife and I got married. I could almost see my wife walking down the aisle. It, it stirred my heart to worship and love God. I'm not a traditionalist, but just that little exercise took me back. Do you understand that God longs to be in relationship with you in deeper ways? He so loved you, he sent his only son. And the most important thing he says you could ever do is love him back with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and everything else comes from that. And then, a couple last thoughts. Incorporate the seven markers of spiritual maturity into your pathway. Your pathway is how you connect with and love God back and walk with him. But remember, as you're doing that, the seven markers we talk about here at Shoreline again and again, biblical engagement, bring scripture into it, passionate prayer, talk with God, whatever your pathway is, wholehearted worship, humble service, Joyful generosity, consistent community, and organic outreach. All those are part of our journey of faith. Bring those into your journey with Jesus, your time with him. And finally, commit to be a lifelong gardener of your soul. Just say, from the, you've got two little girls. From the time I'm a little girl, if you love Jesus, till you're grown up and have little kids of your own, maybe, right? To say, I am going to take care of my soul. And when I fall down and kind of get off track and go a week or a month and don't really spend time with Jesus, I'm going to know that his arms are open. He say, I'll pick you up, I'll dust you off, let's keep walking. That's what he desires. And so, Lord Jesus, this is our prayer. That we would love you with all that we are. Our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Because you have loved us with an everlasting love. And this Valentine's Day, Lord Jesus... Whether we plan on getting a card from anybody or not, whether we're going to spend time in a romantic way with anybody or not, Lord, remind us that we are greatly loved and that you delight when we love you back. Grow us to love you with all that is in us for our good, for your glory. And I would dare to pray, Lord, for the sake of the world that needs to see that you are alive and at work in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I send you off with a word of blessing, I want to give you a couple invitations. I mentioned the, the book Sacred Pathways. We have copies here. We'll have them for a couple more weeks at the Connection Center and also online. There's a link that you can click on if you want to get a copy of that book. Next week, I'm starting a new series. It's a four-week series, and the title of the series is Stories of Courageous Faith. I think right now in our lives, we need more courage in our faith than maybe we have in a long time. So we're going to look at Elijah and Elisha and just look at their stories of courageous faith and let God speak to our hearts. Also, I want to let you know next week, we're doing a, the, the, uh, the virtual lobby that we do over here. We're going to do it up on the stage because we're going to have a lot of fun with, uh, we're going to little, little, play a little game called Elisha or Elisha, you tell me, because people get them confused a lot. 
And we got some twins that are going to be up here doing that. We got people in the church going to be up here doing that, playing a little game show so you can play along with some social media stuff on this. It's going to be kind of a fun series looking at these two different people who are so bold in faith, but people always get them confused. We're going to learn more about them as we study the scriptures together. If you want prayer today for anything, a great joy, a great need, whatever it is, if you're here on our campus, you can go right up the stairs here. We got a prayer team at the top of the stairs over here love, waiting to pray for you. And if you're at home, you're going to see an email you can send a prayer need to that we'll put on our prayer list, or you can call the number. We have somebody waiting right now live to pray with you. And so get a hold of us if you want prayer. And then finally, if you're new at Shoreline, if you're, if you're online, you can see a phone number right there. Just text the word welcome. You see it on your screen there to that phone number, and we will follow up and get to know you and answer your questions and reach out to you. And if you're here on campus and you're new, please don't leave without sneaking back right to the very back there where the balloons are. We have a team there to greet you. They want to give you a gift and thank you for coming and answer your questions. So as you go from here, go with absolute confidence that you are loved by the God who sent his only son to take the cross and bear your sins and rise again and lead your life and commit yourself to tend the garden of your soul that you might love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Amen? God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday and we'll dive into the life of Elijah.